Hey, Namuksa, good morning. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much, Brian. The warring princess feels like a battle. <laughs> the warring princess is not a warrior. Mm -hmm. She's a, a kind of woman who finds herself in a war zone and goes to war, but does not lose her femininity in the war. How is, how is that possible? So she uses, um, the idea about the warring princess is about the mixture of royalty and being a woman. Mm -hmm. Because once you are a princess, there are so many people that can say I'm a princess, I'm my father's daughter. But the idea of a warring princess is that she's not only a princess, but she's using her royalty to change the world. Mm -hmm. So she's at the forefront of change, mm -hmm. both at home, in the community, and in the nation. Wow. So she's a very different kind of princess. The cover of this book is quite interesting. If, we, if you can just look at this. Thank There's, you, you know, um, a beautiful cloth and shoe like uh, women but there's a snake below and this <laughs> it, it gives what are you trying to project with this cover well um our story of war starts right in genesis mm -hmm. yeah you know the whole antagonism that the devil created mm -hmm. you know he came right at god by attacking eve right. but what is so amazing about uh, reading genesis is that when god is whispering the battle plan he whispers it to Eve by telling her that your seed will crush his head. Yeah, yeah. You know, that is very profound. What yeah. God is, in, in, as I describe in the book, what God is saying is that she has in her the power to crush his head, mm -hmm. but she has to be fully feminine for that to happen. So for the woman to win this war, that's why I use that, that sort of uh, shoe, mm -hmm. she has to be fully feminine. So she cannot be trying to be like a man. That's very profound. Then That's interesting. She Hold it right there. She cannot be trying, trying to, to be, be like, like a woman. Man. And, and, and that sounds like feminism now. We're going to do issues of feminism. And, and there is a difference. One of the things you say that yes. some, some people overrate feminism. Mm -hmm. Why do you say that? There's a difference between femininity and feminism. Go on. Femininity is being authentically woman mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. while femininity has to do with trying it's almost like a war mm -hmm. a war against masculinity a war against men mm -hmm. but the more comfortable what i describe in the book is that the more comfortable women are mm -hmm. in their femininity the more comfortable men will be in their masculinity so there's no confusion there isn't that against the struggle that especially feminists have have, have gone through all this time to just get the equal space in matters work uh, matters uh, land conflicts early on the big story we we're talking about land uh, matters uh, even religion where you're yes. getting more women clergy isn't that really relegate in that discussion to nothing. Okay, Brian, one of the things that I don't write about in the book, but it's like something I deeply believe. Right. Once I come and ask you for my rights, mm -hmm. I am saying you have my rights. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. You see, the moment I begin to ask, Brian, give me my rights, I am actually saying that you have my rights. So why I don't agree with Feminine, with, with, with feminism is that in asking men for their rights, mm -hmm. they are actually saying that men have their rights. What I talk about in the book in chapter 8 is know your rights. Your rights come from your heavenly father who is the king that of kings. That like feminism. No, Josephine. there is a difference between feminism. Because women are demanding for these they are, rights. They are, demanding, they, they are demanding of their rights in the wrong place. A princess's rights come from her father. Uh -huh her king father, her royalty. So the place she needs to focus is what are my rights as a princess? What are those rights? Everything that the king has to offer. Mm -hmm. If it has to do with economics, if it has to do with leadership, if it has to do everything that the, any kingdom, if you talk about, for example, the Uganda kingdom, mm -hmm. it has a, it has a, um, it has things that it offers its citizens, mm -hmm. whether it's uh, financial, whether it's health rights, whether it's anything that your father has promised you. Mm -hmm. So you have a right to take it. I give a story, one of the things I write about, one of the things I use in the book are stories. I tell yeah. stories right from chapter one up to chapter nine. Yeah. So just to explain that issue about rights, in chapter eight I write about five girls who found themselves in the setting of, 
of um, ancient Israel, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. At that time, women were not, could not own land. So these girls found themselves in a situation where they did not have a brother and their father died. So it's in a setting where land is being given out. There's, there's, they're giving Joshua, they're giving other guys. And they're thinking, well, our father lived well in Israel and he has a right to own land, right? So this whole issue of women not, not owning land, they thought was a very emotional thing. And yeah. it's in the Bible, the story yeah. is in the Bible. Yeah. So what happens is girls, of course, I really dramatize it because I, I, I thank God for the gift to tell stories, right. right? So they step up to Moses and say, our father didn't have a son. Can't we own the land that is allotted to our father? Mm -hmm. And Moses checks in the book, checks with God and finds out actually they do have a right to own land. Mm -hmm. So uh, and, uh, a law was written in Israel that if a father dies and he has no son, the land can go to their daughters. But he also says something to them, mm -hmm. that for that land to stay in your allotment, you have to marry from your family. And for me, what that I translate is to marry in true royalty. Right. Once you marry a slave, you lose, you lose that land. Lose, and that really, yeah, yeah. Uh, this is a very touchy thing I'm going to say, that for girls is marry royalty. Right. That means marry a guy who, who thinks about the things that you think about. Yeah. Because many women, they pursue their dreams and all these things before they get married. Once they get married, all that is thrown out the it window. It stops because yes. they, they are trying to be good wives and yes. subjects. So they have to lower their... You know, one of these days we're going to talk about this S1 and it's causing... I'd love to talk about it's it. It's causing problems in many <laughs> marriages. So I'll, I'll call you back yes. for that. But mm -hmm. you, you seem, you know, reading your book, I saw lots of examples about about women in the Bible. Yes. Is, is that how you see your life? Is that the perfect picture, the projection of, of the perfect woman that you see? Yes. I mean, once I started, I started to think about the concept of the warring princess five years ago. And the moment I started, it really dropped from heaven because it, it was so totally out of my range. Right. It was something I didn't believe in. I wasn't that kind of a woman, to be honest. But until I submitted to that concept, I started seeing that the Bible is full of profiles of warring princesses, women who are ordinary, ex living very ordinary lives, but extraordinary women. Yeah. And I see that God put, like, inserted them in the Bible for our benefit. If you look at stories like Ruth, Ruth was an everyday woman. She's a widow, right? She's, she's lost her, her, her heritage. She's moved out of Moab. She's moved into a strange land. We, are all, we, we encounter such women on a daily basis. She's struggling, she's poor, and all these things. And yet, while all that was happening, God was setting her up to change a nation yeah. through the birth of, of a, the grandson of Christ Jesus. And then you have Rahab, the story of a prostitute. Every day we deal with women who are being you know, thrown in, a, for example, in the media. I, I don't have to name names, yeah. right? Can you picture any one of those women actually being a nation changer? It's, it's possible, just pick a name. Mm -hmm. If any of them encounters their king father, they'll realize that all this that has been happening, you're being set up for nation changing. And the stories are many days. Esther, she was an orphan, yeah. right? A commoner, like mm -hmm. you and me. Mm -hmm. How can I be thinking of myself as royalty, equate myself to Kate Middleton, Najinda, and all these things. I'm a very ordinary girl. Yeah. You know, how is it possible I'm here? Mm -hmm. It's because I embraced my, 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 my calling to royalty, and I stepped up to what my father has in mind for me, and everything changed after that. Mm -hmm. So that's the calling of any woman, regardless of where you are. Your life can be ordinary, but you're meant to be a princess. What, what, what does the book do about women who don't read the bible because that that also because they couldn't maybe had to read yeah. some of these examples yeah. women who don't read the bible will love these stories because i tell them and uh, friends of mine have read it who don't, who've never read these stories from the bible because they tell them the way i see them they tell them from my perspective and it causes them to read the bible then because it causes them to love the stories i was like that many of these things used to bore me in the bible mm -hmm. but then i asked the holy spirit to help me see it the way my life is yeah so as I tell these stories I'm telling them like a novel and much of the time as I'm telling the story you don't even know that I'm telling a Bible story yeah like the story of Rahab and how how I picture that way she falls in love with one of these spies and whatever could happen between them so Bible stories are real stories it's just that we've fed into the lie that they're removed from us they're real stories I can see my life in them right yeah you went to Saint uh, 
Mount St. Mary's Namagunga. Yes, I did. Uh, what was, what did it help in making you the one? Oh my God, Mount St. Mary's Namagunga, I, in the book I say, if I hadn't gone to Namagunga, I wouldn't have been able to write this book. One of the things we learned in Namagunga is to balance, like multi-juggle all these different, different things in the air. Right from morning to evening, we, had, we learned to peel. There are many schools where girls need to peel. We'd had to, we had to peel, balance sports, balance academic excellence, spirituality, uh, grooming yourself because, I mean, after peeling, then you had to show up with a very white shirt and all these things. Wow. So amazing things. We dug. So many schools don't dig. We dug. Bal finances. I, 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 I think maybe that's why some of us don't like <laughs> don't like agriculture. Exactly. Regardless what the there government so does, it was so punishment. <laughs> there are so many <laughs> things to learn. It's an amazing, amazing school. However, what I write about in the in, in the book, it's also the place where my concept of beauty. Of, of beauty was interfered with. I tell a story of when we were in, 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 in S1, right from when I came from home, my parents raised my sisters and I, I don't have brothers, they raised, they raised my sisters and I to dream, you know, to pursue your dreams. And my parents are watching, by the way, I love my dad and mom. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, so they, they, they raised up to embrace our dreams. So when I went to Namagunga, I was looking forward to doing anything that avails itself. And one of them was the acclaimed Christmas play, you know, it, Everybody knew about that place. So I go to Namagunga and I'm looking forward. So I'm waiting for the auditions. And the auditions did not happen the way I thought they would happen. Mm -hmm. There was a hand picking of the characters. Yeah, and for that me that always happens. Yes, it's and for me that casting, that, that yeah. was that yeah. was a shock. You know, the, the the angels and many of them are amazing friends of mine were these, you know, really beautiful, tiny brown. brown. <laughs> and and I didn't make that cut because of my I call myself my son kiss my son kiss skin. <laughs> I didn't make that part. Mm -hmm. I didn't make that the I didn't make men because that part was taken. I didn't make the wise men because they were supposed to be tall. I didn't make any of the parts, so I feared that I'm going to be a sheep. <laughs> or <laughs> I mean, or, be a sheep. or the woman that cries. Or the innkeeper. Now I was traumatized. And I had Who to have be no line. And I had they to just be <laughs> and I had to be in the play. So what I did, I offered awesome. myself to be a shepherd. So I went to the front, became, got, got the part to be a shepherd, had to drape up in canvas robes, and I was looking forward to the <laughs> stage because my dad was in the audience. Uh -huh. So I, I did my best. Shepherds don't talk that much. I did my, I pulled off my piece. <laughs> and at the end of the show, uh -huh. I, 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 I asked, asked, I'm sure I don't remember this story. I asked him, Daddy, did you just see me? I said, and he couldn't remember because... <laughs> Who are you? <laughs> <laughs> because of my because of the robes but anyway that for me was very monumental because right. I started feeling that I was ugly right and that killed me right so then because of that my response to that was I slowly became a tomboy Okay. You know, just so that I mean to fit in the image, the self concept that I had. Yeah. And I talk about later how I, you know, I met a, a guy well uh, after campus who belittled me more and more. So I understand when, when girls forsake their femininity and try to be men. I, I totally yeah. understand. The whole thing we are dealing with, with men transforming to women, it starts at a point of brokenness mm -hmm. you know don't mm -hmm. be I, I don't want people to be deceived I know mm -hmm. I could have gone with it I could have become a tomboy given up my hold you know That's true. but thank God God showed up at some point mm -hmm. you know along the way he showed up at some point and had me read Song of Solomon for a period of about a year places where he say you are beautiful you know, your skin is dark, but it, you are lovely. It reaffirmed. Yes, your, your, I had to read it. Over. At first, I would roll my eyes, but then as I read it, I read it. You're, you're my beloved. You are precious. That's interesting. He got me to actually realize that I am beautiful. I'm mm -hmm. fearfully and wonderfully made. Mm -hmm. I, I started to enjoy. He had to teach me to enjoy being a woman, to enjoy dressing up, to enjoy doing makeup, you know, to enjoy, to not antagonize. I don't have to antagonize anybody to make my point. Before I, what I did, right. I had to antagonize and, you know, it's amazing. So it, it's a, a long journey. It started in Namagunga and all that, but right now I am fully feminine. I don't want to be a man. Why would I? Think like a man. What's that all about? It's just be a woman, that's it. Exactly. All right. You, uh, okay, I'm, I'm really still stuck in the shepherd story where you're like, in the innkeeper is always, like, this is the only action they do. 
<laughs> it's interesting. Yeah. You, you also, uh, and you talk about how you had to learn how to do makeup and how you have learned to just, you know, appreciate the feminine side of you and, and pursue that strongly. Yes. In your book, you talk about how image is everything. Yes. That is, okay, that's, the book also is a journey, you know, a journey of finding, um, meeting your king father. It's a princess. What happens to a, it starts out as a lost princess, yeah, right? Yeah. You're out in the wilderness, which I really was. I, I, my father had found me when I was at campus, mm -hmm. but I mean just before campus. But then he f brings you into the palace. I gave the story of, I don't know if you've watched The Prince and Me. No, no, not yet. They, they, no. <laughs> Actually, anyway, have you watched the, 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 the the what? The, the, prince, the, the prince and me. Uh, anyway, any of those. Okay, you've watched Pocahontas. You've watched Pocahontas. Yes. Perfect. Uh -huh. Let's talk about Pocahontas. If you look at any of these princess stories, right? The girl comes out of the wilderness. She's brought into the palace. The, she's taught palace protocol, how you walk, how you talk. How you eat. Yes. Mm -hmm. But just before she's presented to the public, the one thing that happens, she's taught how to dress. Princesses do not underestimate the power of their physical beauty. Mm -hmm. She's taught how to dress. If you, took, look, if you think about Kate Middleton, if you think about Princess Diana, um, uh, Royal Highness um, Najinda, the way a princess looks is powerful. Right. I give examples of how God would take time to, sh to do all these different flower species, you know, the midnight sky with its stars. That, I mean, the giraffe, all these things that we see is a God who is extremely passionate about beauty, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So I talk about how a woman's beauty is extremely powerful. Your dress can heal people. If, if we don't believe that a princess dress, a girl's dress is powerful, how come entire newspapers will go on for weeks about dress and I don't have to go into the detail <laughs> we know or the, the absence of it or the absence <laughs> or the, the, absence, absence, yeah. the absence of it so dress is extremely powerful it's just that we've given into the lie that it's not right. so I talk about ladies learning to enjoy to dress up yeah learning to enjoy their garments how they package their royalty mm -hmm. because after that i talk about how then you you begin to transform your family your nation your community but that area has to be fixed your appearance look at that if you've read this book the warring princess the portrait of a triumphant woman you can give us a call and um Tell us what you thought about the book, but also ask the author, uh, Josephine Namukisa, mm -hmm. what exactly her inspiration was. Um, you also have a background in architecture. How yes. does that happen? Well, architecture is about concepts, mm -hmm. learning how to take a concept and think through it and make it happen. So you are a trained architect. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. And it's one of the best things that happened to me, studying architecture. Because it, that's another thing. If I hadn't studied architecture, I wouldn't have taken the concept of the warring princess and ate it and dealt with it for five whole years mm -hmm. for it to manifest into this book and this idea of, of who I am. So um, what architecture helped me with is being able to take a concept and detail it. That's what we do in art school. Wow. Yes. Are you still at school or you're done? No, the, no I, I'm done. Mm -hmm. I'm, I do very many things. One of the things I, I write at the back of the book, I run an organization called Ekiala, Inspiring Students. Mm -hmm. But currently, I'm also working at KCCA, which has been an amazing story that happened. I, I'm going, I, I'll write about that in Warring Princess because too. Because the executive director seems to be the Warring Princess. <laughs> She's an amazing, amazing yeah. person. Mm -hmm. Amazing, very inspiring person. But I mean, this book has happened. Something I write about in the book, Brian, okay. is... Let, uh, hold that thought, because we have a phone call. <laughs> okay. Good morning. Hello. Good morning. You're live on Morning at NTV. Hello. Hello. Yes, good morning, sir. Where are you calling from? I'm calling from Mabacha. Yes, uh, your name? My name is Peter. Yes, Peter, go on. Yeah, I'd like to leave you to the video. Mm -hmm. Thank you. She's mm -hmm. in the middle of the five parts about all the people who are living in the world. Say that again. She's in the Bible. Where she's from, 
Okay. All right. Thank you so much. Let's get another phone call. You're live on morning at NTV. Hello. Good morning. Uh, please step out from your TV set. Good morning. All right. So I, I asked. Uh, good morning. Hello. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Your name and where you're calling from. Oh, thank you for calling. Your comment. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, I, I really can't make out some of the things yeah. they're saying. Uh, if you call us, please uh, step away from your TV set. We're getting lots of feedback and we can't hear uh, clearly what you say. Good morning. You're live on Morning at NTV. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Yabo. Uh, your name and where you're calling from? Uh, my name is Kathy. Yes, Kathy. Uh, Thank you. I'm mm going -hmm. to But I'm going to be in the Then I'm going to be in the house. I have a. I Thank you so much for calling. We'll take one more phone call. Good morning. You're live on morning at NTV. Good morning. Okay. I, I, I don't think we are. All right. Now, yes. I, told, I talked about the Bible and how, you know, people who don't read the Bible can relate to this book. And this yeah. gentleman, I, I, coming from northern Uganda, there's <laughs> lots of land conflicts. So probably he wants yeah. some scripture in the fight against <laughs> these land wrangles. Yeah. But yeah, where is, where is that in the Bible? Yeah, Moses, the story of Moses, because he was allotting out portions of the promised land. Yeah. And they went by family right mm -hmm. and these girls happened to be in a family that had no boys what usually happened was the father's land goes to the son mm -hmm. so what would happen if he had no boys and that was the issue they hadn't thought about right so the idea is that the warring princess is aware that she can get anything that the father has promised her, right. that her gifts can bring her, whether it's finances, whether it's academic accomplishments, whatever. And that's what royalty means. That's what it means to be a royal woman. However, she does not use those things to antagonize people. Mm -hmm. She uses those things to change her family. I gave an amazing story. Interestingly, it just came to me. I write about it in the last chapter, the story of Aksa and her husband, Othniel. When she married her husband, her husband was a fighter. He had been involved in the, you know, the winning of the promised land. But Aksa was not a wealthy man. When he, I mean, Othniel was not a wealthy not man. Better, yeah. yeah. But when he married Aksa, Aksa told him, you know what, what you're going to do? Look at that beautiful piece of the promised land, the most prized piece of the promised land. So she influenced him to go and ask George, um, Caleb for it. Right? And he went and asked, and he became a wealthy man just because he married her. So marrying a, war, a warring princess is the best thing any man would do. Look at that. Are you single? Yes, I am. Uh, are you available? <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to give away, you know, I'll, I'll, this is a beautiful book. I don't like reading, but I read this book. Mm. I, I absolutely love the book. I think uh, one of the things is it projects the woman, the, the ideal woman. And of course, we are surrounded by lots of feminism and, and the idea that a man must be uh, this particular person, a woman must be this particular person, and then you end up with accidents like Caitlin, you know. So I, I like that you address that interesting book. Josephine Namukisa, one last thing before I let you go, you talk about you, you, you love cooking and you love organizing the home and yes, you exactly. love all this stuff. In a world where women are working hard, when, do you, when will you get to do this stuff? 
amazing. I talk about that in the last chapter. Thank you for asking me about my favorite part of the book is the last chapter. Mm -hmm. when, I to, when, when I talk, it's not the last chapter, but one of the chapters talks about the art of war. A woman's, I talk about home field advantage. You, you, you enjoy football, don't you? Yeah. You do? Only when Arsenal is winning. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> now, the most dangerous thing is to fight a team on its home ground. On its home ground, you'll be beaten. A woman's home ground is her home. Wow. Whether she works in it full time or not. And I talk about the day women lose power, the day we lost power over our home ground, we lost the war. So whether you're working out, if you talk about the Proverbs 31 woman, she was yes, a busy woman. Perfect woman. She She's a, she to go, the Bible talks about how she goes to the marketplace, exactly. works, but also brings back. Yes. So uh, we have been endowed to run your home and run whatever else that you're doing. But your battleground is your home. So I give stories like Jael, who brought the enemy into her home ground. The early church was built in a home. Forget these big institutions that we have. Mm -hmm. The most powerful church is the church that is built in, in, in people's homes. So the day women lose control of their home. So you, you have to find a way in which you do all these things, but you run your home. So a Proverbs 31 woman woke up early before everybody else fixed her home, gave instructions to her servant girls, she had servant girls, and ran around the place. And in the evening, what I call about her magical touch, her magical, her magical touch will be found on everything, to be found on her husband, to be found on her children, and on everybody that she serves in that home. So your most powerful battleground is not where you work at work, even if you should excel there, it's your home ground. The day you give it to your servant girls to rule it, you lost the war. Yesterday my wife told me something profound. You give the devil a stool and he's going to take the bed. Everything. Wow. <laughs> this is powerful. Get this book today. The Warring Princess, The Triumphant Story. Uh, the, the Portrait of a Triumphant Woman. Where can it be bought? In Aristoc. Mm -hmm. You can get it in Aristoc. You can get it online at Amazon. Mm -hmm. Yes. Wow. I promised someone I would give them this book, my copy, but yeah, I, I, I underlined lots of things in that book. So. <laughs> <laughs> and it's also a study, because I write, it's a study questions at the end of the chapter, so every woman should Felt have like one. homework. Yes. <laughs> a devotion part, <laughs> yes. if you have understood the yes, book or yes. not. Yes, you have to keep answering those questions and asking questions. So every girl should get her own book and a pen with it. Josephine. Yes. Delightful conversation this morning. Thank you morning. very much, Absolutely Brian. Absolutely fulfilling. Mm -hmm. Ladies, men, go and get this book. If you're a guy and you'd like, you know, the woman to be powerful at the home again, you should get her this book. Because <laughs> I know lots of um, homes where the woman has absolutely lost control. The guys are cooking. I love cooking. And uh, I only cook once, but I know where the dude cooks every day. <laughs> or we that, eat out. That, that is a sad story. That is a sad story. Yes. And you know, it's, it's laughable, but such, such stuff can absolutely inspire you. The Warren Princess. That's what we had for you on Everyday Life. Make sure you stay with us when we come back. We'll talk to a warring princess of sport, Aisha. Oh.